Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever and whenever you are joining us. Um, this is In Conversations With at the Sanitation Workers Forum. My name is Jen Barr. I am one of, part of the organizing team of this event. I'm also an independent researcher on anthropology and public health with a focus on sanitation in India. And joining us is a good friend of mine and good colleague, um, Sharada Prasad, and I'll let him introduce himself. Thank you, Jen. Uh, I'm Sharada Prasad, and I'm really excited to be here and uh, contribute through this forum. I, I am, I'm a researcher, but also a sanitation uh, specialist. And uh, my research was focused on uh, reuse of fecal sludge in Indian agriculture and uh, also the related uh, sanitation work. And uh, I'm excited to be here to discuss more about my work related to sanitation. Yeah, and so thank you. Um, so we're, today we're gonna be sort of focusing on, on your work and your photography work um, because you have this long history of creating very compelling and sometimes beautiful um, and sometimes tragic photographs of, of sanitation workers and their lives. And talk through your, we wanna talk through, you know, your perspectives on photography and and how you go about it in your process. So just as a sort of broad question, how does photography, why does photography, uh, why does photographing sanitation, why, why is photographing sanitation so important to do? No, no, thank you for this question, Jen. I think uh, I, I never thought I would use photography for something like sanitation because uh, I, I was more of a photographer who would use my camera just to capture some memories of friends and my trips and things like that. But once I started my research on sanitation, it was quite shocking. No, I, I, I don't want to call it just interesting for me to see the way this work is done. And uh, for someone from India, I was kind of ashamed that I was not able to see the sanitation work at all because uh, part of the problem is that, okay, we all find sanitation work kind of challenging and we don't want to really like stand and look at an overflowing uh, manhole or, you know, or, or, or any, any kind of uh, human waste for that matter. It is not a scene that we like to enjoy. But that said, that also means that, that is, though it is visible, it is not always seen, right? So in, in, in that way, I realized that, okay, maybe it's important for me to, uh, while I do this research, for me to figure out a way to document it in such a way that I can transport these stories or this way of working to the people who are not really interested in these issues and help them understand what really is happening in today's India. And I also started my research when, of course, there was a total sanitation campaign started a decade ago, soon after which became Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. And everyone was talking about India as a clean country and we have made so much progress and whatnot. But how do I provide them the evidence? Right? Like, see, part of photography is not just taking my audience closer to the work by eliminating the required smell, which is a strong part of uh, the disgust, right? But at the same time, how do I generate evidence to show that, okay, actually this is what is happening as we are speaking. Though we say that, you know, Swachh Bharat Mission, not total sanitation campaign, whoever wants to support whichever claims that there is so much progress. And another thing is that using camera, in my case, I wanted to focus on not only how the sanitation work is done or not only to create evidence, but also to tell the stories of the sanitation workers and their history and the way they live even today and their struggles. So I wanted to capture all of that. So in a way, I wanted to use photography to make sanitation work visible. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's you've done that very literally, right? Like. Uh the camera is all about visibility. And in a lot of our sanitation discussions, we often talk about you know, making X visible. And, and you were quite literally doing that. Um, I will also just sort of clarify for the people who are watching who may not know, the total sanitation campaign and the Swatch Parat Abhiyan 
um, which translates to Clean India Mission, are the India were the Indian central government's uh, initiatives to the, create sanitation for the entire country. Um, so you know you mentioned the idea of you know the fact that human fecal matter is so disgusting and is deeply repulsive um, to people, right? So. And that's a big part of why this work can be very dehumanizing. So how do you capture the, how do you, how do you think through the idea of capturing human fecal matter that is so disgusting? Um, and how do you depict it in your photos? And sort of how do you balance the fact that this work can be dehumanizing, but um, you don't, but not dehumanizing people in your photography? No, 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 thank you. See, the thing is, yes, as you, as you pointed out, photography is a great tool. It's also a tool that can easily be used to oppress the further oppress people who are already oppressed, right? Like people are already working in these degrading work conditions and you can use photography to degrade their life further. So in that way, my initial photography was not sensitive enough, uh, Jen. I need to acknowledge that here. This is for everyone uh, who wants to venture into this type of a journey because uh, I wasn't taught to take photographs, right? Like I, I learned it by practicing on my own from my own mistakes. But very soon, uh, at least in my case, when I started working on sanitation uh, photography, uh, I realized that at one end, there are so many photographs about how this work is done. You know, this is such a degrading, dirty, humiliating work. And you will find a lot of pictures on the internet quite easily. But what I wanted to focus on was tell the people behind these scenes and to show uh, or, or depict a story using pictures to say that, hey, these are just like you and I. You know, so that is how I wanted to approach it. I wanted to show the human side of their life rather than the disgusting part of their profession. By doing that and using text and also a subtle imagery. See, we all have imagination. We all know how to imagine shit, right? Like we see it, we shit every day. We look at our own shit. And if we find our own shit to be disgusting and smelly and whatnot, you can imagine how disgusting it is or humiliating it is for someone else to actually manage it for you, you know? So that imagination, people, they, they, they have it. We don't have to worry about that. I don't have to zoom into a toilet or, you know, any of that. What I need to show is the human side of these workers, mm -hmm. you know? And that is where instead of objectifying them, in, instead of reducing them to the subjects of a photograph, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to transport my viewers to the homes of these people, mm -hmm. to the dreams of these people, you know, and if you look at some of my pictures, you cannot even guess that these people are sanitation workers. Nobody wants to carry that label with them when they live their day to day life. And that's what mm -hmm. I want to kind of bring out that even they are just like you and I, you know, and mm -hmm. if you see my photo, I say you will see that, you know, their houses, they clean, they keep their houses very clean because this is another assumption society has just because somebody does dirty work doesn't mean that like it is, it is the work that they do. It is not the life that they live. And mm -hmm. there is a different type of, uh, I would say compulsion that comes into choosing your sort of work, particularly in a place like India, which has a strong history of uh, casteism, untouchability. And I'm really glad how Dalits have been able to stand up for their rights, though the rest of the society has not been, or the politics has not been able to fully support them. It is essential that we use this uh, photography to create, as I already pointed out, an evidence, but also to show the other side of the story, to say that, you know what, their houses are equally clean. Their children also want to play and watch television instead of doing homework. You know, mm -hmm. the, the similarities are so many in a way right. that I would say it's identical, our life and their life. Mm -hmm. Just that one, they, they also dream that their children do better, they get better jobs, they never do any of this, you know, 
most of our parents, they don't want us to do the job that they have been doing, right? Like <laughs> this is, of course, when it comes to sanitation workers, this dream is so powerful and strong. But on the other end, children are children everywhere. So I wanted to capture that. I wanted to show how people live. I wanted to talk about their own journey, the marriages, the families and all of that. So that's how I ventured. I took cameras instead of taking them into these uh, manholes or person holes, however you might want to call it, but to their own houses and show them that, you know, this is how they live and capture their stories as mothers, as husbands, as sons, you know? And I started uh, doing that. And the point that you made, how do we take photographs? I think, as I said, we don't have to zoom into the disgusting nature of the work. People can actually imagine that. If you say that he or she is a sanitation worker who does manual scavenging, people know what it is. You just have to subtly show what the nature of the work is. So that way I have focused more on the tools that are used, or you can see in my pictures, like what they carry and how they do that work rather than zooming into the actual shit. So, mm -hmm. and, and photography is participatory in nature. When I say participatory, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this other method called participatory photography, but it is a conversation between the photographer and the audience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I show them something and the audience using their experience and imagination and psychology, they will fill in something. So in a way we, mm. we co-create the photo essay. And um, I collaborated with uh, my PhD advisor, Isha Ray, uh, to, to write these essays, right? Like each of my mm. photo essays have pictures as well as some text. So where we have tried to complement the disgusting aspects we have left out in the photographs, but we have subtly covered them in our texts and people have eyes, as I said, and collectively they have been able to create this and uh, to the extent possible, they have been able to, um, I would say, come up with the photo essays where I, at least I believe that the dignity of the sanitation worker is not lost in, in my pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. Having said that, there have been some pictures, I, I cannot deny, where I have taken the images mostly to show the degrading nature of the work mm -hmm. you know as an evidence which i've created mostly as an evidence part you know not to further degrade them so as i said there are two aspects to my photo essay one is to create this evidence base and one is to tell the human side of the story yeah i think you bring up a lot of really compelling points right about ensuring that we stigma of sanitation workers comes from a lot from flattening their identities to nothing but being to being nothing but sanitation workers and it's very easy to do that in photography as well i think you also brought up a really interesting point that runs counter to a lot of narratives we you know you see a lot of people who think we need to or you talk to a lot of people or i have um, who think you need to sort of zoom in on the shit and the disgusting and the dehumanizing nature in order to make a compelling argument about why we need to you know, help these help these people or address this issue. But I think you make a really good point that that really does dehumanize them further. And people are smart. We can, you know, you don't have to zoom in on the shit to know that like that is a bucket of shit that they are carrying. And that's, you know, not great. Um, so do you want to turn towards one of, should I pull up one of your photographs? Sure, sure, definitely. All right. Um, let's do a screen share. If I can find the correct button, there we go. All right, screen share. All right. Yeah, I can see your picture. Fantastic. Um, shall we start with this one? Sure. Can you tell me about what is going on in this picture and how you came to take it? Yeah, so um, this is part of the very first uh, set of photo essays that I did uh, about manual scavenging in Lucknow, right? And uh, Lucknow has been the parliamentary seat of um, our uh, ex-Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee and also the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, right? And it's it, it, it's a major city with rich history and whatnot. And I was kind of shocked to 
I figured out that this practice existed even in 2000. Uh, I think this was uh, 14 December when I took this picture. And uh, what I wanted to point out in this particular Sorry, image. Sorry, just is, to, I'm yeah. just halting you so I can clarify. By this practice, you mean the practice of having people physically and manually empty out dry latrines and using small hand tools or by hand. Right, right. So uh, just to add to that, uh, so manual scavenging um, is a method of cleaning dry latrines using, as you can see, she's just carrying a bucket. Actually, there is shit in that bucket and there is a kind of a scooper, a C-shaped scooper that she uses to just uh, scoop the waste from these dry latrines. Dry latrines, as this is again for the viewers, it's just a stack of bricks with a space in between and people just shit there and make sure that they don't pour any water. And uh, it is the responsibility of these workers to go to those houses on a daily basis, empty those latrines and carry this waste and dump it somewhere outside the you know, city or village or in some you know, gutter or something like that. But their basic responsibility to haul the waste away from these uh, houses. So that's what it is. Um, that's it. Though this picture was taken in 2014, this is 2021. And as we speak, dry latrines still exist in India though there has been a huge reduction in the number of dry latrines. Uh, but we will come to other, other, yeah, other challenges. But uh, the, the point that I wanted to make in this picture is to show that the very house in front of she's walking, there are several such houses which have air conditioning jetting out of their windows, as you can see here. Some of the houses even have cars and two-wheelers and televisions and all other modern luxuries that they have. But for various reasons. I'm not saying that households, they don't want to build toilets or whatever. The reasons are more complex. They don't have access to a poor flesh toilet. And this practice continues to exist. And it's morning and interestingly, nobody even wants to look at these workers. And for some reason, I felt that it's dogs who's, who tend to notice these people than human beings is how I felt about this image. And in a way, this woman has covered herself fully so that she doesn't want her identity to be known. But at the same time, she plays such a huge part that only dogs can perhaps recognize, though she is servicing households in a pretty well, I, I would say, I wouldn't call them super wealthy neighborhoods or anything, but they can surely afford a toilet. But uh, this practice continues to be there in such households. So, yeah, I think... Yeah. Uh... So those are some really compelling elements. I would also say in this photograph, I think you, with the um, stonework on the left side, you see sort of the um, historical nature of Lucknow, right? right. Um, and it kind of emphasizes almost the timelessness of, of this work, right? The fact that it's been going on. People have been doing this work for centuries. And, totally. right, and, mm -hmm. and into 2014. And, and if you look at it, Jen, again, unless I point out that there is shit in that bucket, it's not easy for most people to guess. And unless they have been working in the sanitation sector, people might be able to take certain guesses. But if you show it to someone else who, who, whose work is not focused on sanitation, it, there could be anything in that bucket. And look at the way this woman is dressed. Mm -hmm. She has her anklets, her bangles, that's a nice yellow sari with red border. So this is a black mm -hmm. and white picture, you know, and there is this beautiful scarf that she's wearing. There is so much elegance that this woman is carrying, you know, with her. And that was the struggle. Like, how do we communicate this to our viewers that these are just like rest of us who wants mm -hmm. to have a dignified life. And at the end of the day, she's carrying it this shit and all of that, but she also hides this bucket. She doesn't carry it home, Jen. What she does is most of these sanitation workers, they put this bucket or uh, a kind of a walk somewhere hidden in, in, in some neighborhood. Of course, nobody wants to steal it, right? Like, you know, people use this. So they, they walk away from their houses, carry these things. And then once they're done, they just rinse them and put them again in the same place. They don't, they don't carry these things with them at all. So it's interesting how most of us don't want to talk about what we do while some of us have jobs and titles which we are really proud of, 
but these people they don't even tell their children about their job mm-hmm. because they are worried that their children might be ashamed their relatives might be ashamed or their children might be harassed in their class or the teacher may not have you know so lucknow is a big city fortunately you can live in one neighborhood and walk for a mile and service another neighborhood nobody needs to know what you do and you also need to share um uh, these uh, st- public stand posts with your neighbors so most of these workers that i i worked with they tend to hide their caste and their work if possible so that mm. it it doesn't bother their children so i wanted to point all of that out this woman in a way turning her back there is a kind of anonymity right but at the mm-hmm. same time she is invisible but also so visible is also the point that i wanted to make and i agree with you that flanked by these two gutters which carry all kinds of waste but not human waste and these historic pillars these dogs this air conditioning all of that and these narrow streets i just wanted to show the landscape yeah i mean it's a very thoughtful photo i'm going to move to the next one um i have to be honest i don't know which one is going to pop up next All right. That's a beautiful wallpaper you got there. Yeah. So it is seasonal. this is mm-hmm. I love this photo. This is possibly one this of my favorite ones you've done. Mine too. Mine too. Um see the the reason why I love this picture is that it's an evening in uh, Lucknow, December. It was so cold and this woman comes back from her day's day you know, day long work. She showers like they these workers they have such high hygienic practices right like the rest of the society seem to have this understanding that oh people who do this work seems to be very dirty their houses must be dirty like these are some of the cleanest places that i have seen you know and i wanted audience to actually witness that using pictures you know on the other end it's also what i have seen is that these are people who do manual scavenging but as soon as they come home they directly go to the bathroom they shower they change their clothes and then they do the rest of the things while i have seen some of the truck operators they don't seem to carry hygiene as seriously as these people do i think some somehow mechanization mediates uh, as as yeah mediation through mechanization is has been such that i don't think they tend to perceive human waste as seriously as these uh, uh, people manual workers do uh, that said i wanted to show the again i i don't want to call someone as more beautiful or less beautiful just because you know of of the situation here but i just wanted to show that these people are as beautiful as the rest of the society and uh, this is what i was trying to point out jan unless i really tell you that this woman does manual scavenging i don't think anybody will be able to guess and that's also something that i wanted to do as a part of my other exercise i wanted to show like three or four photographs of different people from different professions in their home environment and i wanted to ask people to guess you know who might be a sanitation worker and i'm sure nobody would have guessed that this woman is has been doing it not just her but her mother her sister her brother it's even her husband entire family does that she lost her father to manual scavenging you know her yeah so the stories are quite tragic but that said i just wanted to show how human they are right and in a way it's not the coldness of winter that kills them it is the coldness of the society so that's another mm-hmm. point that i wanted to make through this picture you know and uh, fire keeps them warm it it doesn't really differentiate and for whatever reason though we carry the same aspirations and dreams society continues to um yeah in a way discriminate them so that's what i wanted to highlight here just the human side of these workers you know yeah and i think i mean nobody wants their entire nobody wants their entire persona to be based on like their worst part of their day right um yeah. so All right, I'm going to move to the third photograph because I felt like you described that so eloquently. I have don't feel yeah. like I want to add to it unless you do. Uh, yeah, one point which I quickly want to make is that if user uh, if the audience haven't noticed it, like it is just waste paper and you know other mm. packing material and things like that that they're actually burning, you know, they really cannot afford to burn 
let's say a nice i don't know propane based uh, heater or even an electric heater or anything they just collect these things from the street and they actually burn them so yeah in a way it's another type of health hazard right but uh that's 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 what it is i just wanted to quickly point that out no that's a good point right they not only they get their salary and livelihood and lives from waste in more than one way exactly yeah exactly thank you for pointing that out all right i'm gonna pull up the third photograph All right, this one has gotten a lot of attention. Um, we've used it in our forum promotional materials quite a bit. Uh, do you wanna just start off by telling me what's going on in this picture and how you ended up taking this photograph? So as I, as I mentioned earlier, Jen, a part of me was disappointed with myself that having um, born and brought up in India, I did not know that this type of work existed. Like I got to know about manual scavenging through Basha's work, India Unseen. You might know her book, right? Like um, Bayswada Wilson and such, you know, they all helped her write that book. And when I read it, I just couldn't believe that this practice existed. And I spoke to some of my friends and even family members. They all thought it is there, but not as predominantly all of that. So that is when I took up photography to kind of create that evidence and tell stories and, you know, take it to a different sections of society. That said, again, sanitation work comes in different uh, typologies, right? Like one is cleaning of these dry latrines is one thing, but what about poor flush toilets, which everyone wants these days, aspires to have. Um, and particularly in the peri-urban areas, these, these, there, there are no sewers and they're mostly connected to pits and septic tanks. And what happens when they fill up? And if you ask someone to guess where this was taken, I don't know how many would guess it correctly. This was taken in the periphery of Bangalore. The pin code is that of Bangalore. The taxes are paid to the corporation of Bangalore by this house. You know, and Bangalore is like the Silicon Valley of India, right? It is the IT city and see what is happening here. This guy using his bare hands is actually cleaning a pit and fresh feces are actually flowing from the toilet into the pit as we speak and look at this picture, you know, and that was the shocking part of me that when I see, whenever I go to take these pictures, I, I want to acknowledge that I have been very lucky uh, in, in, in most cases, because a photographer can, can only witness what happens, right? Like you can, I, I cannot direct what, what happens. So I have to constantly move around with two of the cameras that I carry and see, you know, what, what pictures can I get? And, um, while I do it, it's very important that I work with them closely and, uh, don't express any type of disgust or challenges in, in, in regarding the work that they actually do, but interact with them as if you are there to just capture those things. So here I was just running around this pit and I had to be extremely careful because these people, they know how to work. They know the grip, like it's very muddy. So I had to mm -hmm. be careful, uh, but I have an advantage in the sense that in many cases, based on the type of lens that I use, I can still, still maintain a distance, but this is just a tip to any other photographer. You have to be aware of what is happening around you. You need to have your camera settings and everything in such a way that you should be able to take quick pictures. And that, that is one thing that helped here. And I really like this image because there is a type of helplessness, right? Like there is this pit. I don't know whether he's going into it or coming out of it or whether he needs help, but can he get that help to really drag him here? drag himself out of it so there are so many ways in which you can try to interpret it you know so i i wanted to uh, take this picture this is one of my most recent pictures uh, that way and uh, taken just two years ago uh, but uh, that said as as you can see this practice still exists in india in in, in places like uh, bangalore so i wanted this to be evidence but before i took this picture i went to uh, his name is kaverappa uh, the guy who is actually getting out of the pit. I, I went to his house several times. 
because many people couldn't even understand that there is someone who is interested in sanitation research or there is someone who wants to use uh, cameras to take pictures of sanitation work. The interesting part, again, Jen, I want to highlight here is that whenever I take pictures, people stop not to witness the awful thing that is actually happening in front of them, mm-hmm. but to ask me, why are you taking these pictures? Yeah. They're shocked that somebody is interested in taking such pictures. They are not shocked that something like this is happening. And that is the invisibility that I'm talking about, right? Like they don't know how to see this. It is right in front of them. They want to talk to someone like me and talk to me about why am I taking pictures, but not think about why this is happening. And there's a type of normalization that happens, right? Like since nobody stops, kids, elders, everyone thinks that, you know, this is not something that they have to even notice. And that is what is very interesting because as this guy was emptying the pit, the woman, the owner who had asked him to empty the pit, she's asking me, hey, can you check if he has cleaned the pit properly? She is disgusted by shit. She doesn't even want to look at the pit. You know, it is their pit. She doesn't even want to do that. She wants me. She doesn't even trust him. You know, like this happens to me so many times when owners ask me to verify whether the work has been done properly or not. Hmm. And sometimes we get, like as a photographer, I get invited into these households. They, they give me chai or anything, something to eat based on the time of the day, but mm-hmm. they don't even offer them water. You know? And yeah. these, are, these are some of the challenges of uh, someone coming from, I would, I, I would say, a class of extreme privilege. And yeah. the struggle, Jen, at the end of the day is that how, how do, like, how do I process that, right? Like at one end, I, I come from a class of privilege and probably some of my ancestors have taken part in this larger uh, scheme of oppressing this section of people. But on the other end, it's very important that I stay close to these people. I use my privilege to, in a way, document their stories. That's how I have been approaching this. So I'm still a good friend of Kaverappa. I have maintained a relationship with every uh, person that I have interacted with when it comes to my photo essays. And uh, the very first uh, picture that you showed, that family no longer does manual scavenging, by the way. So they are out of it. That's... Most of the dry latrines in Lucknow are gone. Yeah, I know, right? That's It's so good to hear. So I yeah. have been calling them up, following them. So that's been nice. And uh, Kaverappa continues to do this work, by the way, uh, because... Uh, uh, yeah, for various reasons, you should uh, uh, we, we should have a separate conversation about that. But that said, uh, that this is another advice to photographers who are interested in doing this type of photography is that don't carry the camera with you for the first time. Go and talk to these people, have a conversation with them, tell them what you do, show them your previous work, tell them why it is to why it is important to document their work, and also it's very essential to emphasize that our photographs are not going to change their lives, you know? And that is another illusion that I yeah. had, Jen. You know, I thought, oh, my essay will change this. My research will, not really. You know, if you're lucky, it will change you and maybe a few other people, but most of these sanitation workers, they have continued to do their work. And, but I'm glad that I have been able to document these pictures so that people can look back and see what today's India really is. I, you know, I think one of the biggest takeaways is, is the idea that of really establishing trust and res- mutual respect, right? And to not go in with false pretenses of like, I will take this photograph and then your life will be immediately changed forever. Um, before I shut, close out this window, I want to just sort of you know, point out a few things that I think make this image not only compelling, but also respectful. I think the fact that you have this image of two people and one is helping the other up and you really do see the strength in these people and peop- these people as well, just physical strength. It doesn't come across, at, it's an active image as well. Because sometimes when you've seen images, when I've seen images of manual scavengers, there is a sense of helplessness that they that they get end up portrayed as or solitude as um, 
but these are, you know, as you said, these are people. Um, and some of, yeah, there's a lot of strength. There's a lot of will in these spaces. And I think it's important that we make sure we don't fall into the trap of just portraying them as like victims. Totally. And uh, one interesting point I want to make about Kaverapa is Kaverapa always works with a team of four people because he has to fill a bucket from that pit and that bucket mm -hmm. needs to be hauled all the way back to a tractor or some type of uh, carriage. So, but somebody has to get into the pit. He always gets into the pit because he doesn't trust other workers because some of them may not always be sober. Kaverapa does not drink, mm -hmm. though most people think that every single sanitation worker drinks, Kaverpa does not drink, and he worries about the safety of other workers. So it is his ethic and integrity in a way that he always gets into the pit so that everyone else is kind of safe, you know? And that was very surprising. And also look at how you need to be almost half naked. That's yeah. another point I wanted to make, right? Like when it comes to manual scavenging, you don't have to do it, you know, semi-naked. Here, he is just wearing his underwear as he gets into it. And uh, yeah, like as they're stripping in front of you, you're like, God, the society is stripping them of their dignity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, like, yeah, like I have a series of these pictures where none of this gets acknowledged. As I'm taking this picture, the it, it is interesting. There is one picture which I could not again put it in public, put out in public because there was a child in that picture mm -hmm. who is wearing this brand new dress because it was a festival that day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's wearing this really peacock blue dress, standing next to the pit, inspecting it, while a half-naked man is actually getting into the pit, mm. while his parents want to offer me chai, but not even water to this guy. What are we actually telling them? Yeah. Right? So that is what I feel we need to be conscious of as today's society, particularly when we raise our children. We need to tell them, what is happening with our society. I think we need to bring, we need to talk about caste more and more. We need to talk about sanitation more and more. We need to talk about gender issues more and more. And photography is a great tool to do that, right? Now I have transported you all the way to this place in Bangalore, you know, and it will be with you forever. And even now I don't do this work as often because of COVID and other things, but I think that is what the power of photography is. So I strongly encourage researchers to take this up because that's another way to reach another set of audience right like uh, uh, you, you know it right uh, Jen you're an anthropologist so you know it much better than I do like the kind of language how we make it inaccessible to you know the rest of the uh, disciplines also even if we are academics right so it can be very ex yeah, excluding uh, practice so photography can be that way you know help us make make our own work you know more accessible and in a way inclusive but as you said the ethics of photography is very very important and uh, as a, as a Susan Sontag always says like uh, people should read Susan Sontag's uh, essays on photography you know photography is like a gun right it's it's kind of a weapon so the word shoot yeah. itself is an interesting term that we use I don't know why we use that word shooting but uh, yeah uh, Thank you. Thank you for asking these appropriate questions. I really appreciate that, Jen. Um, yeah, I love talking about this with you. As we wrap things up, is there any sort of final pieces of advice you'd like to tell the people who, will, who might be watching this about what you want them to think about or do when thinking about not only taking photos of people in this work, but um, publishing photos of people in this work? Yeah, uh, so the only thing I want to kind of uh, reiterate uh, is that in the end, we are taking pictures of people. And in, in today's generation, a picture exists on the internet forever. So we need to be extremely careful of what type of pictures we take, what type of consent we have. We need to describe these things and say that, hey, if your neighbors and children don't know about you doing sanitation work, they might know because of these pictures. So have clear consent. And these people wouldn't understand. See, some of my pictures have been displayed in Europe, in, in Canada, in, in multiple places, in international exhibitions. 
like these people will not even be able to imagine what it means where all it gets published so to the extent possible we need to explain you know how these photos might get used and there should be a way for them to reach you make sure that you don't change your phone number or you know you mm -hmm. should be accessible at whatever point in time if they don't want your pictures to be used there should be a way for them to reach you and ask you not to share that anymore. So that is one thing that we need to do in today's era where everyone's privacy really matters. The fact that these people are making themselves vulnerable so that their photos can be taken and put out in this world, you know, that itself is, I don't know, such an act of courage, right? Like to say that, yeah. hey, take my picture and if it is going to be there on the internet forever, I'm okay with it. And I, I don't know how many of them really understand the scale of internet, to be honest, but it's very essential that we explain. And that's where I said, I take my other work and I explain it to them. I also take the pictures of my own family members and I show it to them. So that way there is a link, like where I come from, who they are, because they are letting me into their private space. So I need to let them into my private space and create some type of, if not a friendship, which, which, which takes time to deepen and you know form, you know, there needs to be a type of camaraderie and understanding and respect, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's all there is to it. And an and acknowledgement that you're not paying them for the photographs and the pictures that you're going to take, because many people, they become very hopeful very quickly. And that's yeah. a dangerous thing. Many people, they start talking about their struggles and how government has ignored them, how society has treated them, because it's been a painful existence for them. We need to be extremely careful. We need to temper those folks in a way that they don't become too hopeful only to realize that, hey, you just came, took pictures. And so that's where I tell them that I'm here mostly to document. Things won't easily change for you, but I want people to know that you still do this kind of work, you know? So be very honest, be open, be respectful. And they are just like us, you know? They, they want to be happy. They're afraid of, like, yeah, there isn't any difference between us and sanitation workers. That's it. Well, thank you so much for uh, um, sharing your experiences and your photo your photographs with, with the, with me and the viewers. Um, it's been a, it's always a pleasure to talk to you about your work. Um, if people want to find out more about you and your work, where can they go? Yeah, they can just uh, look up uh, Sharada Prasad um, on internet and they can easily find my website and my contact details. Uh, but uh, I can, I can, you, you have my contact details. So feel free to attach them to this post so that they can reach out to me if they want to talk about their photography work or their sanitation research. It's always an honor and pleasure to discuss those things with them. So I will be happy to, yeah, um, support them in whichever way I can. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for making time to talk to me and uh, focusing on this important issue. I appreciate it. Take care, Jen. Bye.